Alright guys, he's in here, welcome back to the channel for another Street Fighter Duel video and in this video we are going to be taking a look at this mad lad right here. We're going to go hands on with him and have a look at kind of what he can do, have a look at him in different team comps, ways that you can maybe extract more out of him, not that necessarily he looks like he needs extracting more out of him because he is pretty insane, right? Let's just get that right out there off the bat okay but we're not going to be fantasy booking this character we're not going to be reading the description and simply telling you that he's op we're going to have a look and show you that he is op okay because he is op so let's have a look and see what his kit is actually all about so we'll start off like we usually do depending on if i remember i've done it in this order or not but we'll start looking at his passive right so his passive a lot of you are probably expecting some sort of a he will stay alive type mechanic like the other bison and yeah he's pretty much got that here as well okay um although although he is actually better than standard bison because he has the same thing as virgil okay now virgil isn't like bison where he comes back to life okay virgil doesn't die okay so that means when you use a character like vega vega doesn't kill virgil vega puts him down to one hp and he's still alive Bison has that in his kit, okay? So he's not going to be one shot off our Vega teams. That's what you should take away from this right away, okay? So let's read through his description here, right? If there is a surviving friendly fighter other than M. Bison, when this fighter receives fatal damage, the fighter's HP will not fall below one for three seconds, okay? I'm just going to quickly disable that. So the key to having him on a team is you're wanting to have him on a team with someone who is unlikely to be one shot already from Vega. So you're talking about characters who can survive that first flurry that he puts out there, you know? So your characters like your Rich Honda, stuff like that, people who can actually take that hit and they can still keep going, they would remain alive and they would allow him to continue to regenerate, okay? So he will not fall below one HP for three seconds and the fighter will recover 60% of max HP over this period. So within three seconds, he's going to gain back a lot of HP, okay? Also, Invitation to Hell will be unleashed. Summon a Vortex beneath a random enemy that is equivalent to Agony Vortex level one. Trigger level three seconds, right? After triggering Invitation to Hell for the first time, Overlord Bison will enter the Infernal Overlord state until the battle ends, okay? So it kinda, the way that he works is he probably, I guess it's probably in your interest for him to nearly die first because then he's going to be in his most powerful state, right? Increase the damage of the Vortex summoned by Invitation to Hell by 20%. The Vortex summoned by Invitation to Hell is equivalent to Agony Vortex level 3. Upon entering the battle, Invitation to Hell will be unleashed once. However, the damage of the Vortex summoned will be reduced by 25%. So you will have seen that in the trial. He just comes out and he immediately starts dishing out damage the second he enters into any sort of a fight. Okay, So you'll have seen that. does a lot of damage. It's got a lot of HP recovery and it's pretty brutal to be honest okay so infernal overlord increase attack by 15 percent but cannot be healed by other fighters after triggering invitation to hell attack will be increased by an additional 15 percent stacking up to 60 percent now i don't actually know if there's a timer on that it doesn't say and um, usually it would say for x number of time or it would say until the end of battle so that part there is not clear. I'm going to assume this would be to the end of battle um, because if there was a time restriction on it, it would generally say it. So 15 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. But at the same time, it would also generally say till the end of battle, right? So I'm not sure yet what that is. It could be either, but I'm leaning more towards it's probably until the end of battle, right? Because they've made the rest of them OP, so it would make sense that they would put something like a buff of that description to make it to the end of battle, essentially, right? So let's look at his kit here, right? So one of the things that we need to be looking for is we need to be looking for Agony Vortex. Agony Vortex, so if we look here, he'll be unleashed, summon a Vortex after dragging Invitation to Hell. So the Vortex is going to do similar to Agony Vortex. Agony Vortex, here it's here. Summon a Vortex beneath a random enemy. The Vortex will continuously draw in enemies and 
in an area dealing soul damage that is equal to 330% of attack. Then it ends with an explosion that deals soul damage that is equal to 182% of attack to enemies in an area. Increase the damage to 380% and the explosion to 209. If Infernal Overlord is active, the target's damage reduction will be reduced by 25% for the duration of the Vortex. So that's pretty good. Um, like I say, that kind of leads into the whole, it might be ideal if you can maybe get him to quote unquote die first, because if you can speedrun him into that Infernal Overlord state, you are going to be doing more damage overall. Because if their damage reduction is not as effective, the rest of your team is going to do more damage. That's quite a long effect if you watch it. So if you're doing your fast combos during that time, you will probably be firing off quite a bit within there. So depending on your setup, the C2 might actually be the way to go for him, but we've not looked at his C3 yet, right? So let's look at his super, right? We jumped ahead there, we looked at his C C2 because obviously it's tied to his passive. Summon a Phantom to unleash a Cycle Torrent attack together that will hit enemies in a large area, dealing soul damage that is equal to 418% of attack and reducing hit target's attack by 10% for 10 seconds. So they're going to do less damage, okay? Increases damage to 480% and again at level 3, if Infernal Overlord is active, the fighter's crit rate will be increased by 18% for the duration of this skill. So again, you can see there, if you can get this guy to be in a state where he's going to essentially take that fatal damage first and quickly you can be in a position where you are going to be putting out more damage a hell of a lot faster so again you can see what i'm saying it might be in your interests to try to manipulate the gameplay to see if we can get to a point where we can get him to take that first hit so let's just say for example you're running a healer on your c1 maybe don't use that healer until you've hit the point where he's triggered then start healing right if that makes sense work that healer into your rotation at that point. You might not need it though. At combo 3, vanish and appear above the nearest enemy, then deliver a crushing blow to enemies in an area, dealing soul damage that is equal to 488% of attack. Also, the soul damage hit taken by the enemies will be increased by 8% for 20 seconds. Sorry. Also, the soul damage taken by hit targets will be increased by 8% for 20 seconds. So, if you have other units within your team who do soul damage, so I think Oni, does, I'm pretty sure Oni does soul damage. Cat, what are you doing? Stop knocking things off. Um, I'm pretty sure Oni does soul damage. He would maybe pair up quite well. There's other units that do soul damage. We've got Monster Hunter Ken who's coming in doing his um, trigger attacks, their soul damage. Anyway, if Internal Overlord is active, the soul damage taken by hit targets will be increased by an additional 12% for 20 seconds. So again, I can see some things happening here where maybe these units who have been sitting on the sidelines not doing too much might actually bring them into play a little bit. So that's fairly positive. Not only is he doing a lot of damage himself, I can see him enabling quite a few other units here as well. So that's obviously fairly positive and we'll probably spin that, see what it's like, see if it actually does pay off don't know, we need to find out, but again, a lot of this seems to be tied to him having his Infernal Overlord state, so again if we look here, you want to trigger Invitation to Hell for the first time from him to enter the Overlord state. Now the only thing I'm, I'm a bit confused about here is, where is it it says, I think it might be his passive, no here it's here, upon entering the battle Invitation to Hell will be unleashed once, Invitation to Hell will be unleashed, summon a vortex beneath a random enemy, after triggering an invitation to hell for the first time, Overlord Bison will enter Infernal Overlord state. So does that just mean it happens straight away? Because if that just means it happens straight away, you're just like immediately in that state. So we'll check that out. Does his first entry when he casts that, does that immediately put him into this Infernal Overlord state? And I think, see here, Overlord, Infernal Overlord, it doesn't have a a trigger time so it doesn't have a it only lasts for x number of times so if you do do it as soon as he enters the battle and it gives you the state at that point and it's not the death trigger that causes it then from the word go he's just massively op well he is massively op right but that just kind of confirms it even more so right when infernal overlord is active the fighter's attack can ignore 20 percent of the target's defense as if he wasn't op enough when he's on assist when he's in the assist position, when the assisted fighter receives fatal damage, a vortex is summoned beneath a random enemy. The vortex will draw in enemies in an area dealing soul damage equal to 265% of Bison's attack. 
Then it'll end with an explosion that deals soul damage to 146% of his attack. It can only be triggered once. At plus 10, if Overlord, you'll notice I've got mine at plus 30, so we'll see what he's doing properly. We just won't see his cards, right? If Infernal Overlord is active, the Vortexes of Invitation to Hell and Agony Vortex will deal additional true damage that's equal to 1% of the target's max HP during the attack. This is capped at 15% of Overlord Bison's attack. Unlocked at plus 20, upon triggering Invitation to Hell, the attack of all other friendly fighters will be increased by 15% until the battle ends. Awesome, again, he's boosting more enemies. And if you've got enemies doing soul damage, they're getting gains off of his kit anyway. So that's really, really good, right? When Infernal King Strike is unleashed for the first time and hits a target, summon a Vortex beneath the target and increase the Vortex's damage by 20%. The Vortex is equivalent to Agony Vortex level 3. So, pretty, pretty crazy stuff going on there. Now we'll look at these cards. I don't have them yet, but obviously at some point, hopefully I will. Demonic Overlord. After tri triggering Invitation to Hell, the fighter's damage bonus will be increased by 12%, while their damage reduction will be reduced by 12%. Stacks up to two times, awesome. So he's doing more damage, they're taking more damage. That's what you want to see. Stacks up to two times, lasts until the end of battle. So he's getting total 24% increased damage. They are getting total 24% increased taking damage. Pretty nuts when you put it together. After triggering an invitation to hell, damage sharing will be activated. This will cause 20% of damage received by all friendly fighters to be transferred to Overlord Bison, lasts until the battle ends. That's probably just going to keep causing him to trigger. That's essentially why that's there. So that's a pretty, I want to say that's a pretty strong indicator that you want to have this guy with his cars. Okay, definitely. He's probably going to still be nuts without his cars, which we'll see in a second. But with his cars, he's clearly going to be doing a hell of a lot more. And when you factor into that, he's also got soul power. You see here, I'm not going to go over these. The soul power obviously does quite a lot, as well as boosting his stats right up. So, at double S, let's take this guy out for a spin and see what he is doing on the field, shall we? So, I'm going to give it a try against the current boss using this team. I'm just going to explain my reasoning behind this team. Um, I've actually taken a car off of Standard Bison so that he doesn't constantly trigger and I can actually use his C3, okay? But the reason I've done this is because <clears throat> Bison, I never actually looked at Guile to, pardon me, to see if he can ignore, like, revival mechanics or anything so if he can this is a bit of a bust right but because standard bison has got his own revival mechanic i'm pretty much guaranteed to always have a unit who is going to be uh alive which would mean base bison could continue to trigger so that's what we're going to run this team we're going to see what kind of score we can get you can obviously see the combo over there i'm going to use new bison's c2 rather than using his c3 I can't remember right now if it was his C3 that I wanted to use to get the most benefit from having Monster Hunter Ken on the team. This is the one that gives you boosted that gives you boosted damage reduction. I mean, really, I wanted to look at this one, I believe, which gives you soul damage. I mean, I think 25% additional damage reduction is probably better than 12% additional soul damage. So, probably works out better this way anyway. So, we're going to be using Standard Bison for the C2, and just for now, we're going to be using Normal Bison for the C3. When you run through, see what this combo is like. Don't know if it's going to be the best combo in the world. Because I'm using Monster Hunter Ken and I want to get most advantage from it, I am going to do this on auto. I maybe I'll do it manual. I'll do it manual. I'll do it manual, right? We'll do it manual just to see what kind of run we get. First thing we want to see though is when Bison first enters the field, does he gain that state right away? Right? So he's casting his thing. Yes, he does. He does. He does. Right, so from the off, he is getting the most of his kit, right? Now what we need to see is does it disappear? Because on his kit description, it doesn't mention a timer, okay? And if that is the case, they, I'll be honest, they do have to update that to say that he does not have that for the duration of the fight. So let's just see. I don't think he loses it. No, he doesn't lose it, right? He's got it for the duration of the fight. That's what we wanted to see. So I'm going to go now and just kind of see what kind of numbers we can do with this guy. So we're putting that up, we're putting that up. Boosting that into that. Hit this because this does soul damage. Do that. Boost into you. Give another load of this. Bison did actually manage to trigger there. That was good. Hit you with that. Bit of this. Give you some boost off of your EX skills. We've got them. We may as well use them. Okay, so his animations are quite long, 
Uh, that's something that you need to bear in mind, especially now, so I'll delay that a little bit, just so that it gives a bit more time for normal Bison to hopefully come back into play. He didn't come back into play, but now we're left with these two guys. Bearing in mind, I have got nothing really invested into my, what you call it, my new battle lusty type thing. Okay, so this was first run untested, never really had any strong strategy about what I was going for there, and that is how Bison performed. What I'm going to do now is I am just going to off camera run through the other four teams. I'll put in my best foot to try and get a good score and then we can compare all the runs, okay? <clears throat> so now I've got the first run in the bag, I'm just going to look at the stats, okay? Now, honestly, I don't think I put my best foot forward with the Bison run because, to be honest, you've maybe seen it, I missed the combo with Bison because his animation was essentially delayed too much. I actually think maybe somebody like Oni would be okay for that. Maybe not though, because he's quite squishy, that's the only thing. It's just trying to think about who you would slot in there, retaining the ability to stay alive, you know, but we'll have a look just now. So, if you look here, you can see the Overlord Bison himself, bearing in mind he's just an S rank unit, he doesn't have cars, and for my teams, he has 50 million, versus the other DPSs on these teams, being literally double that. They are like 100 million, so they are a lot stronger based on the fact that they have more levels on them. So you need to bear that in mind, really. He should have half the damage output of them because they are twice as powerful. So we put out 312 million. I'm going to do one more run because I don't feel like it was very optimal. But if you look forward, you can see here that obviously Fire Aidon built differently. Not the best run in the world. Done quite a bit to be expected. Leonardo, insane as well. The Turtles team is pretty cracked. But then you get to Vega, you can see there, it's not the leap you would think it is. Now again, these numbers are not necessarily what I would call impressive, but I don't think that's by virtue of the unit. It could be the content, but I think more than likely it's probably down to the combo I put together there. So we're going to try a different combo. The main problem being here is keeping them alive. That That's my worry, right? So I'm just going to do something a little bit different and see if we can do a team that will both stay alive and obviously function pretty well as well. So survival-wise, I'm not sure how much this is going to like actually perform, but I'm going to give Bison some of the advantages that other units in this run had. You had the other teams having some sort of a support style buffer on there that was giving them boosts. Rose, I've literally lifted her off of the Vega team because <clears throat> he was essentially doing his numbers without any support. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to use Oni for the C3. He might not necessarily be the optimal person to do the C3, to be completely honest. I'm, I'm toying with the idea of putting someone like for me anyway, Trendy Ryu on here. In fact, you know what, I will do that, right? I'll put Trendy Ryu on here. But that means I'm going to change the combo here. I'm going to be doing C1, C3. Trendy Ryu is going to be doing the C2. But again, he's got the advantage of being a unit that's likely to stay alive, which is what we were looking for. So I'll do it. I'll instead put Virgil over here on top of Rose to hopefully keep Rose alive, keeping the combo chain going. And we'll see if this can produce a better outcome. So. I'm going to do the same thing again, I'm going to let it run through, I'm going to attack a little bit later because I actually did attack later on the other teams, um, so try to make it a little bit more of an even player field. The only thing I don't know is how much more delayed the combo is going to be and I also didn't change the fighting spirits, so that could affect things right? So. After this one will go, which is probably a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. So we'll go now, which is probably not the ideal time to go, to be completely honest. Pop you, do a little bit of that. And then you can go again. A bit more support, style healing. Just giving you crit damage boosting and stuff like that. Go again, give you some of that, give you some of that. Hit you with that. And I feel like I was a lot later starting that combo than I wanted to be, most likely because I was not having my fighting spirits where I wanted it to be. I do think this is a better score though. 
but I would kind of like to do that one more time, but actually put the right fighting spirit on because massively slowed that down because we lost two fast chants, which is why my combo wasn't starting when I thought it was going to start. So we're going to change you, give you fast chant. I'm going to take it off of Bison, who it was on. And if we go to here, and we go to here, we'll take, why have you got Valiance on you? No idea. Take that off, and we'll take it off of Beast Zang. Okay, now I believe where I thought the combo would start, which would be around about 50, 52, 50, 51, right about there. I should have three bars. I didn't have three bars, that's why I delayed it and done it later, which obviously gave me less combos in the long run. So now we will get to see what I'm hoping to see. So I'm actually going to wait till here. This is where I'm going to do it, just at the end of this combo. Now I'm going to go. So I'm popping it now. Pop you. I've done the wrong thing. Doesn't matter, it'll still play out, it's fine. Do that. I really want to use Trendy Ryu's C2, not his. C1. So we'll do that again. So we should be getting some different things here. We should be getting boosts from using Ryu. We should be getting healing and crit damage boosting from using Rose. Obviously, we're getting Bison doing his attacks. Although I do think that maybe he's not doing them all. So there's a bit of Slowing down, meaning to happen on my part there. Okay. But that was obviously a lot higher. I got a feeling, looking at this, because of the length of time it takes for his combo chains and stuff like that, I actually think if I go into this and do this on auto, I think the score's going to be higher. So I'm actually going to do an auto run here. I'm going to start the attack earlier. And I think, potentially speaking, it's going to be higher. That score there was probably about, what, 200 million higher than the run I'd done with the two Bisons. But I did see quite a lot of times Bison was still busy when I went to do his C3. So instead, what I'm going to do is just after we've got two bars, so once he triggers this next attack, I'm just going to start auto attack and I'm going to see what happens. That's what I'm going to do. Because then that allows things like, if the animations are taking a little bit long, it allows them to play out. And it means that if we were missing attacks because of things like animation speeds, we're not going to be missing them this time. And we'll get a potentially truer reflection of the kind of damage that he was putting out there. Because again, I feel like maybe his animation speeds are quite slow. Well, they're not. Maybe they are quite slow. You're going to have to accommodate for that, you know? And if you do it on auto, you don't have to accommodate for it because the game will do it for you. The only problem is, Otto was a bit overly slow, so it's a catch-22 situation of you're probably still faster doing this yourself, but just knowing the timing and knowing when to attack and stuff, but that'll come with time. The new unit, the unit's new, I don't know the timing and stuff for it yet, so... Right, no, it's better doing it manually. Right, it's far, it's far too slow doing it, Otto. I'm going to do it one more time, but I'm just going to add in a slight delay between the attacks so that... I'm not missing the chance to trigger Bison on his C3. So I want the C3 to hit every time, which is what it wasn't doing because I was taking not enough time. I was going to say taking too much time, but I was taking not enough time or I wasn't waiting long enough to actually go ahead and try and finish the combo chain. So I'll wait until he's triggered his next attack and then I'm going to go. So... I'm going to pop this now, he's done his attack, I'll pop this, I'll wait a second or two, I'll pop you, I'll wait a second or two, I'll pop you, then I'll pop you, and then I'm going to go again straight away, pop you, wait a few seconds, pop you, then we'll hit you, Bison's not busy right now, that's good, that's what we wanted to see, pop you, wait a wee second, pop you, wait a wee second, pop you, right, he's not been busy yet, so that's good, so I've not missed any potentials from him, Pop you, wait a wee second, pop you. He is in use right now, hopefully it's not for too long. Oh, yeah, we caught it, we caught it, that's fine, that's what I wanted to see. So I feel like we're catching the attacks this time. Just giving it a wee delay. Seems to be enough. Not too much. Not too quick. 
Might get one more in. Uh, don't think we got one more in there, but we still did some decent stuff. Another big attack there. So, versus other teams who were doing, well, I think it was, that was what, 600 and something million? Again, he's a double S unit, remember that, it's important, you do need to remember that. If you compare that to the other teams, I mean, sure, it's not, it's not strong, but he's a double S unit, which tells me I can see that already when I've got the investment into him, he's going to be putting out big numbers. I know he's going to be putting out big numbers. And again, with timing and stuff like that, I've got a funny feeling that just on this event alone, once I find the right combo to go with him, I can see the Bison team ending up putting up a score like a billion on a run. So, right now, all I'm going to say is, without knowing the timing, without knowing the best time to attack and stuff, I think he's already shown that he's performing pretty well. When you take that to somewhere like PvP, when if you've got him on a team with someone like Standard Bison, who's not going to die unless you're facing someone like an Oni or a Vega, you know? He's just going to keep living, he's just going to keep coming back to life and he's just going to keep doing more and more damage. So, yeah. Is he better than Vega? I, 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 it's a really difficult question to answer. Um, Vega is like a whole other thing onto himself. On the right team, probably. But again, I think it's one of these things, they're both great units. I don't really think you need to necessarily say one is better than the other. I think potentially Bison could be. It all depends on how much damage he's doing on that opening attack. But he's definitely busted. 100% he's definitely busted. Um, I think we're really going to see that starting to show out in PvP. If you're wondering why I'm not showing you PvP, I'm too, in my own local grouping, I'm too strong. So it doesn't matter who I take out there, I'm going to win anyway. So it's not going to show you anything. So I need to wait for showdown. It's the only way that I'm going to be able to actually show you visually how he does something like HWA, something where the levels are equalised. Because in a standard event, there's no point. I can't show you anything because I'll just beat the people anyway. But anyway, that's it. Bison, busted, great unit. Definitely great unit. If you're someone who's already got Vega and you've summoned and you've saved some tickets after the turtles, then I think he's well worth going for 100%. I, I can totally see this being a unit that, that dominates. And um, yeah, it's just about finding the right combination for him. His animations are a little bit slow, I guess. I think he's got the same issue as Standard Bison, where because he does so many things, like exploding and stuff like that, he can be doing that while you want to use him. You know? So rather than his animations necessarily being slow, it's more he's triggering and he's doing something just at the exact point you want to use him. So I guess that's just like a quirk of his kit that you'll need to get used to. Um, obviously with normal bison we can take a car off him and make that a lot easier to manage. Don't really see a way we can do that right now with this guy, um, other than maybe not having him at the front, possibly. I guess that would work, I don't know. But yeah, I think he looks great anyway. That's the long and short of it. He looks like he's definitely a broken unit in my opinion, definitely busted. Don't like to say broken, I like to say busted, because broken can mean two things in this game. But Bison, it's a thumbs up from me. Anyway, I've been Hazing. Thanks for watching this long ass video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.